so thank you um everyone for joining really, really appreciate it um so what we're going to look today from our perspective is we're going to start to look at leadership development and the primary option primary part of today is we're going to start to look at how ilm programs fit in to a leadership and development program so the institute of leadership and management but we're going to have a look primarily today of leadership and management and then coaching and mentoring so we're going to have a look at those programs today talk about what they mean how long they go on for also we're going to have a look at kind of the different nuances between the leadership and management and then also the coaching and mentoring schemes so that's that's kind of the purpose of today so who are we? So Inspirational Coaching Limited, what do we specialise in or what do we look at and work with our clients? So we look at five pillars that we work with organisations. So we look at facilitation, mediation, so restorative justice from that approach, either training clients or actually working kind of individually with them. Leadership programmes, we're going to go through today and talk about how we help organisations through with their leadership programmes and then also coaching from an individual basis, but also uh, the ILM programmes that we offer. And then the last one we have there is that we help organisations modernise their policies. And we run a recent webinar uh, around our positive dialogue framework where more agile policies we can help organisations from a more productive, uh, beneficial point of view. So you would class as what's called a cultural transformation organisation. That's what we kind of look at uh, to support people. So I'm going to go to the chat function just to get us kind of minds thinking uh, for that perspective. But just think about this question here, and I'll take it back off the screen in a second. But what are the benefits of developing your leaders, colleagues through a structured training program? So what's the benefits to you going for a structured training program or the benefits to your colleagues as well going through a structured training program? So just have a think about that. About that. So I'm just going to come off from sharing the slides, but just sharing the chat function. What's the benefits to you? or to other colleagues going for a kind of structured leadership or development programme? What's the benefits you would see? So I just, just wait for our first one to ping up. What we would see. So we've got there so let me just kind of go up from that point of view so uh, in HR it means we could take a step back and let the managers take responsibility yeah beautiful Rachel so we would take a step back and actually do the job that we are meant to do and let the leaders really take that role as well so yeah really really good point yeah that's what we're going to look from the point of view so uh, and we've got there Leah so consistency and investment in people yeah brilliant so we want to aim at consistency across organizations and for colleagues development uh, and also to show investment for colleagues that's a really really important part so uh, welcome Nadia so good to have you, you on board so it shows the value of the organization and puts on a personal development prioritizing time for leaders to develop where this often falls the end of their to-do list correct so it's usually the back end where people get developed uh, and in time to adopt social learning as well as structured content so yeah it's great to that, that kind of stakeholder relationship when they're going through a structured program uh, and kind of really talk with other people that are going through that transformation so yeah spot on uh, from that point of view so i just hold it there if there's any other kind of comments or views uh, around kind of the 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 purpose or what's the benefit for us going for a structured training program uh, and any other bit yeah thank you Jenny so about industry recognized qualifications so yeah it's really important it's probably you know around retention and recruitment about having industry recognized qualifications uh, for colleagues now so let, let's have a dip in then so today we're going to start to look at uh, from our perspective uh, and we're going to go through on here so we're going to start to look at today between leadership and management programs of the ILM and then also then coaching and mentoring. But let's just touch first about why it's important to try and get a structured program for our leaders. So the data we've taken from here is from ACAS, OECD and also CMI, recent report data. So in the UK, on average, we've got 2.4 million untrained managers per year. So 2.4 is a lot of people each year that have a high responsibility of looking after their colleagues. 
Now, those people want to go into managerial jobs. And usually what happens is they follow, if they haven't had any training, they follow the person before. And then they kind of make it up as they go along. The second point there we look at is then we've got 82% of people for a recent CMI survey said actually they weren't adequately trained to be as a line manager. And then the last part there, we've got also that no leadership or management qualification. So 52% people surveyed through the CMI data said actually they had no qualification to actually look after and support managers. So I know on, on our call today, we can we can look at it and go, hey, that, that's probably right on how we feel what we see. But there are better ways that we can look at. So if we kind of turn the data on the other side and have a look, and this is through ResearchGate and also global leadership forecast that on average, managers or leaders or colleagues that have gone through a structured, organised programme, on average, their learning capacity increases by 25%. So they, they want to learn, they want to get that richer learning. The benefit to the colleague and the organisation is on average there's 20% improved performance. So that's great it's because people want to work for a growing company or an organisation that is moving forward. And then the last part there, 4.2 times more likely to outperform from an inclusive approach to leadership. So from equality, diversity, inclusivity, that they're thinking broader that can help themselves and the organisation. So we can see there's lots of benefits about actually having a structured, organised programme, but there's hundreds more about retention, recruitment, those kind of things that would actually help the organisation and colleagues and save a lot of time, a lot of money, but also increase in productivity. So for some people um, on the call today may not have come across uh, the Institute of Leadership uh, Management before, so ILM. So um, uh, Inspirational Coaching Limited, we're an approved centre. So we've gone for a rigorous approach to have all our documentation and work signed off that we can represent ILM and support those qualifications. And we're supporting a lot of organisations uh, going through their qualifications at the moment, which is great, really, really exciting. So ILM, how, kind of what's it look at, first of all? So about leading, so it's there to really help support leading uh, organisations through a collaborative culture that really develop their colleagues to move forward. It looks to inspire colleagues. So people going through the programmes, they want to inspire, to really leverage storytelling, to really um, work with stakeholders, better skill set, and actually to start to really align to those organisational goals, which is key. And then we follow on to that organisational goals part about actually working and developing people's skill sets of coaching, setting goals, really delivering those goals, and then the people are aligned. Now on the call today, people probably know already that on average, people that align to valid companies, values, goals and organisations, on average, statistically, are usually 30% more profitable. So that's why we, we'd look at uh, from the ILM qualifications. We've chosen ILM, so Inspirational Coaching Limited has chosen ILM because we see the reputational brand that ILM's got, also the stringent checks that go within it, and also then the quality that we get uh, along the way. So we, we've, we've chosen that organisation deliberately that suits from our perspective. So let's have a look. So people say to us often uh, um, at ICL, how, how do the qualifications represent? What do they look like? How do they feel, uh, et cetera? So I've just put it up on the screen, what it roughly equates to, and this is from the ILM website, so just have a look there, just have a ponder through, uh, and then I'll just kind of just pause for, you know, about 20 seconds, just for you to see what it kind of looks like. So in, es in essence, the qualifications, when you have a look on screen, <laughs> Most organisations we work with, we work with level three, five and seven. And usually that would be a common thread when you kind of look in the industry, people usually work three, five and seven. We can do six, we can do four, we can do two. The only area um, at the moment at which we refer clients onto another organisation uh, is then through apprenticeships. We don't uh, currently work with organisations for apprenticeships. We pass them and work with another organisation around that. So level three 
is aimed at if you look predominantly at a level standard. So that's the kind of per, first part you look at. Level five is then looking at diploma standard. So from that point of view, and then level C, you're looking more at kind of postgraduate master's standard for that. And in, in essence, the easiest way to explain them, the higher you go up the ladder, the more work or in depth that it may become, if that makes sense. Which you would have seen from A level diploma and then also master's degree. The area that you see a lot or we work a lot with organisations is around that level five arena. So really for that middle management, senior management um, to really aim their qualifications. But we also work with a lot of organisations around level three of new managers moving forward from that perspective. So let's have a look at first of all, we're going to touch on the leadership and management point of view, and then I'm going to go on the coaching and mentoring point of view. So ILM leadership and management is really to give organisations and colleagues a great grounding for roles and responsibilities. So really making sure that leaders perform in their role and kind of the responsibility. What's great from the ILM roles that we can do, we can pick from an array of courses that fits the need of the organisation or the colleagues. So we've got a, a kind of a good spread of um, courses that will really meet people's needs. We're looking at that building those better relationship skills, increasing communication, building that motivation, and really, really important about how colleagues assess their own performance. The real key difference is that we get people aligned to the organisation strategy and then we really get managers understanding their role and their leadership styles to get the most from everybody else. So how does it look in practice? So today is to give a high level view of how it actually starts to work or look in practice. The slide after this one, I'll show you in a graphical form how it would work. And I've just picked out typically today the level five to give you kind of um, a good taster. So the leadership and management course is broken down usually over a 12 month period. Uh, we've done it a bit quicker for some organisations between nine to 10 months, but usually you're looking at a 12 month period to get that qualification. And I think we'd all accept that to get a diploma, you wouldn't rush it through. It's a real good quality learning. What we love about the ILM programmes and how it fits for leadership and management is that we take, first of all, a modular approach. So let me give an example. We would work with organisations or colleagues doing roughly each month a module, and it could be six modules or seven modules throughout the year. We also, which we do uniquely, is building action learning sets. So how it would usually work on average, you would do two modules and then we do an action learning set to cement your learning and then bring back with other colleagues to really share that kind of learning and development they've gone through. The second part with each module, there is a portfolio attached to it. So a really good way of getting down your learning, documenting all your skills you've taken on board and also to start forming how it would help your organisation. So really practical learning. What we also provide is an ongoing coaching for the colleagues. So that's unique for the colleagues that if they need any help, support throughout the process, but we really give that colleagues the one to one tuition they need to make sure they hit that standard, that kind of gold standard. Throughout the approach, we work with the organisation that if we need to tailor, change the modules, etc., we can do that and we have the, the ability to do that. So it is constantly agile to support the teams and colleagues. What we also do from an inclusivity point of view is that some colleagues prefer not to write so they can record their answers and we, we then mark from that perspective. What we also see from our point of view is then that a higher standard of people achieving the leadership and management qualification. We're so, we're so proud of actually how many colleagues we get through the leadership and management that actually they can see that we really want to support and get them there by the end of their qualification. They're not left by themselves. So in practical terms, how does it look? So in essence, the level five, which I've just shown as an example today, is a certificate we would do over a 12 month period. Now we can run level five certificate, we can run level five diploma as well. Diploma would be around about 15 months to achieve compared to the certificate. This is just a theme to show you about how we've run with the organisations that we've been working with at the moment. 
So at the top in the dark blue, we've got what's the current modules or units that we're working with those organizations. They are all face to face and we do do online as well. But currently one of the organizations is we're working face to face. So if you took on the left hand side where it says developing your leadership styles, we would have a face to face session. You would then be given one month to complete down the bottom your portfolio. So then the portfolio comes into us. We would then mark it and then give feedback from that point of view. The second module you've got there managing mental health in the workplace. If you go down to the bottom after that one, then you'd have a portfolio to complete. A month later, we then bring in the action learning set to cement the learning from managing mental health in the workplace and developing your leadership styles to really cement that learning and make the colleagues feel valued and keep them on track. We then go to module three, which is developing leading teams to achieve organisational goals and objectives. And then yet again, you'll get the gist, there'll be a portfolio aligned to that. As we move forward, the fourth one, developing individual mental toughness, a portfolio would align, and then we have an action learning set a month later. And then what we've got there, the last two ones are managing individual development. So that is actually how do you motivate colleagues through PDRs, through one-to-ones, et cetera. And then we've also got with colleagues about managing stress and conflict in the organization, which we use from our experience of mediation skills. Portfolios would be aligned to them. And at the end of that process, then as an action learning set. So that in essence, now the top bit where we got the blue, as in developing your leadership skills, managing mental health, we have a array of courses we can pick and choose to tailor to people's needs. But this is just one organization that we've worked with that said that actually would really meet their needs. So you've heard me talking there for a bit. I'm just going to now move over and just share with you one of the colleagues that we've currently got going through the level five uh, certificate, but also has gone through the level three, which we've supported as well. So I'm just going to hand over now and just play for you Lucinda, um, and she's from an organisation called Tillamid. Hi, I'm Lucinda. I'm the customer service manager at Tillamid. I've been in this role about three and a half years. And previous to that, I studied pharmaceutical chemistry at Nottingham Trent University. And I've had different roles within the chemical industry, healthcare, HR, and now within the pharmaceutical industry. I've managed people for just over six years. I've had teams anything from one to six people. And previous to Telemed, I've not had any official training on how to lead people or how to manage people. So when I was offered the place on the ILM3 course, uh, I jumped at it and I really enjoyed the course with some of my colleagues and I completed that uh, last year. So I'm currently enrolled on the ILM5 and I find it really motivating and it gives a positive energy to myself and to my team. I've been able to look into myself deeper as a person and how, what I do as a manager and as an employee and how it can affect other people and how it's perceived. I've been very lucky with my team and my manager that they've let me practice on them, let me talk to them and have the conversations and they've been very supportive along my journey of being a better leader and being a better manager. From the ILM5 I've really been able to build my confidence as a person and as a leader and to understand more about myself, more about the people I work with and to understand them as people and how I can make the best out of them to, to get the best results for the business. So the benefits to the business are huge. We've been able to really network just from doing the ILM course anyway. We've built networks across the business of people that I wouldn't usually work with and I find that really beneficial and we've had lunch together, doing the course together open discussions, playing with Lego, doing all bits that we wouldn't usually be able to do within day-to-day -day workload. I feel like understanding your employees, but also understanding how you are as a person is beneficial to the business because you can build a strong team that understands what they need to do, where they fit in the business, and that knows that they're valued as a person and not as an employee. 
And I think when somebody feels like that, whether they're a manager or an employee, they want to put the work in. So I think just having these conversations and the structure that ILM5 has given us has been able to really put that in place. And so our people feel like they are valued when you have the correct conversations with them and therefore you're able to get them to perform better. So that's really kind of Lucinda to give us um, kind of a testimony there, which is really, really wonderful and a great colleague to work with uh, through Tillamed. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to then go through the coaching and mentoring and then I'll pause afterwards and then welcome any questions that people have got uh, from that perspective. So the leadership and management courses are very structured. Usually um, you would have a module each month, if not a module, an action learning set to go throughout the year. So very, very structured and you can choose from a raft of different courses to meet the needs of the organisation. Coaching and mentoring at the level five that uh, I'm going to talk through today, that that kind of level five certificate, which is diploma standard, is completely different from the leadership and management. And what I'm going to want to do today is just walk through the differences between the coaching and mentoring courses that we offer, how it's structured, how it benefits you as a colleague and the practice that you do uh, to go through. So let's go through and have a look at coaching and mentoring. So the benefits uh, and looking at it. So first of all, about assessing your own skills. Just to share with everybody, when I did my coaching diploma many years ago, I used to think I was a good coach. I've loved working with people. I thought I was a good coach until I got my qualification at level five. Um, I was pretty poor. So going through there, really understanding coaching, what is mentoring? What's the difference with coaching? Also between um, kind of counselling, therapy work, is it, where does it all sit, sit and complement? It gives you a deeper understanding of how you can help the organisation and colleagues. It also helps you have better reviews with colleagues to make them grow for the future. And also we work with people that go on from later on that they develop in this course and then they run their own businesses as well through coaching practice. What we're looking here is to really align work that people would like to be as a really good coach, great qualification to the organisation's needs as well, and also through the mentoring process. So lots of benefits like the leadership and management course as well. So I'm going to start to talk about what's the difference between coaching and mentoring structured course and then the leadership and management. So first of all, the training is what we would call is front loaded. So what we would usually do is four days training. Um, some organisations we do four days, uh, one day a week. Uh, another organisation we're working with, which we are going uh, next year, is four days back to back. So the idea of the front loading is that we train you in the skills of coaching. We develop you on what's called advanced grow model. We also develop you about really contracting with clients, how to make sure it's safe. We look at what's called transactional analysis, positive psychology and nudge theory. So we work a lot with you to set you up from after the four days to be a coach. After the four days, we then move into what's actually your coaching. So this is level five certificate. You have to do a minimum of 18 hours coaching with three different colleagues. Now we encourage that your coaching is usually each session, there's usually a gap between three or four weeks to see the difference in that colleague's performance and the growth. If you try and do once a week, you see no different and they've not had a chance to do it. Usually three to four weeks is an optimum time to see a difference in colleagues' performance. After each coaching session, you're then asked to write what's called a reflective learning about actually what you've learned about your coaching, what's gone well, what hasn't gone well, and actually it, it just kind of gives you that downtime. I must be honest that when I did my coaching qualification, the best coaching I had learned from was the ones that didn't go well. I could really self-reflect and then build up a kind of a, a better structure for next time working with the colleagues. The last part is then what's called your reflective learning overall. 
So that is where you would summarize all your development you're learning from start to finish about really celebrating the growth that you've moved forward and how you've helped the organization as well or yourself. So the, the distinct difference here, which I'll show you on the next slide, is that it is all front loaded and the course is predetermined. We are writing the course. There's not a choice necessarily of what's involved, but we would sit down with you and tailor to your needs, but it's more structured around what we would develop from our approach. So the first one we said there is first four days that we'd have literally to front load the course that so we can set you off to really go and pr practice your coaching and development. What we've also done, which is unique, is we've built in action learning sets. Quite a few organisations will train you as a coach and then let you go and then hopefully you're done it within a year or kind of that time. We take a completely different approach because you do get coaching fatigue and you do get that learning fatigue. So within that year period, we've also built in action learning sets where we get back together as a team. We really celebrate our learning, but we also keep on track. So at the beginning, that after the first four days, there's a portfolio to complete. So just about your learning about what you've learned so far about coaching and mentoring and then actually how you're going to implement. We then move into the kind of coaching that you would kind of go through the 18 hours and then complete your reflective learning statements. And they're really easy to do because you really immerse yourself in that learning. What we've also put in uh, the kind of um, uh, coaching and mentoring course is about training people up that how they can do what's called to become a disc practitioner. So profiling for colleagues. So I'm a disc practitioner, so we're going to be training colleagues about how to carry those out as well for their, them and organisations, but really give them that safe environment and really demonstrate how to work with those. The last part which comes up to the end of all your development work, your coaching, etc., is then your reflection, which is on the right hand side. Just some documentation to write about what you've kind of celebrated of your go, your 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 kind of um, coaching over that period of time to really bring it all together. Now we're on hand constantly to help and support you. And within this program here, we give colleagues individual coaching. So coach the coach. We also look at them when they are coaching, we drop in and then do supervisory calls to make sure that they meet the standard that A, we set as Inspirational Coaching Limited, but also ILM. Now, the last part here to finish up in some organisations say to Steve, we're not too sure whether this is right for us. Can it work? Can leadership and management, can the coaching courses? So we go into organisations and perform what's called a 360 degree needs analysis. So it's usually done over three to five days, but we work with organisations to really set them up to give them a very good detailed plan, recommendations and proposition. Phase one is we work with stakeholders to see what their clear goal is, where, where do they want to get to? Stage two is actually what's currently going on. So what's the kind of normative, what's in place at the moment? And then we look at data, so quantitative, what's going on for that organisation, which could be colleague engagement surveys, performance, etc. And then we perform colleague forums through a quant qualitative data point of view. We then come up with the design, which is to bridge the gap, which is to take it from where the organisation are currently where they want to be, we design what is to bridge the gap. So we would design the program of ILM or coaching and mentoring. And then the last part there, phase four, is we come up with a deployment strategy to work for you and to run that kind of that process through. So what I'm going to do is give myself a pause because you've, you've heard from me talking a lot there through the two programs. This is a high level view today to give you an idea about the qualification, the structure behind it, but we welcome any questions today and also after today, please reach out. We'd love to jump on a call with you to see what your needs are to kind of help you with your programs. So I'm going to stop there and I'll open up kind of the chat room or if people want to come off from calling. Please ask any questions that you think would be appropriate to you or that could work from your point of view. or if it's met your need today or you've liked it or what you've seen, it'll be really welcome any views back from there. I 
I see Rachel just typing now, so I just hang on there for Rachel. Lovely, so really helpful. Thank you uh, uh, there, Rachel. You got kind of a, a good overview from that point of view, so that's really good. Just got Leah typing there. We can see from Leah typing up from that perspective. Uh, OK, so uh, Leah, really great to hear structured. No questions. That's brilliant. So from that point of view. So what I would say is you've got Jenny on the call today as well. So Jenny works with me at Inspirational Coaching Limited and we work with an array of consultants as well. Please reach out from that perspective that if you need to chat or you'd like to find out more details about the ILM programs, please reach out to us from that perspective. So any other questions before we disappear or I'll wrap up today to give you kind of your lunchtime back? Otherwise, we'll progress from that point of view. But I wish you all the very success and I look forward to hearing from you in the future. But please, as I said, reach out anytime. We're always happy to jump on a call to help from that perspective. So thank you very so much, Leah, Rachel, uh, Zana for joining. Really appreciate it. And Jenny as well. And enjoy the rest of the day. So thank you, everyone.